welcome to Eternal Ramblings, the show that's not really a show, it's me rambling on and on and on and on and on and on and on for about 30 minutes to an hour and a half, somewhere in there, usually. <laughs> ah, I've woken up bright and early to get this done, and so I am pacing back and forth downstairs, and our downstairs isn't really finished, um, but they call it a finished basement. Um, I don't, because the job was so poorly done by terrible contractors that you can actually hear the floor popping. I walk over it. They, they got this fake wood laminate on the floor. Um, but it's not really, <laughs> not really done right. I mean, there's, it's right on top of a concrete slab, but I mean, what do you expect? It's a basement. But it doesn't quite fit it, and so it bubbles up in a couple areas, and it pops, as you may have heard as I walk over it, which I'm trying not to do, but you can't just stand in one spot, and obviously my chair makes too much noise if I sit in it, you're going to really hear that thing, because there's no way I'm going to sit stark still for, I don't know, an hour, hour and a half? I, I doubt I'm going to go for an hour. Let me go ahead and just sit down here, that'll make it better. Uh, on the futon. The futon that we're trying to get rid of. <laughs> it's not very comfortable. Um, I mean, it's fine. If we sit on it for maybe, I don't know, a few minutes, 30 minutes, it's fine. It, it does the job. Sit on it to watch a movie. Uh, if you try to sleep on this thing, you will be hurting. If you also try to sit on it for a long period of time and be a couch potato, you will also be hurting. Uh, it is not very, it doesn't have a lot of padding. And of course it has the problem of every futon where if you sit in the wrong spot, you got, you have a, a metal bar shoved up your butt. Uh, <laughs> other than that, I mean, it looks nice. It's a nice looking, uh, futon. Uh, but we bought it off of Wayfair and obviously we never got to try it out. I mean, but there's really no trying out a futon they're not all none no futon is going to be <laughs> no futon is going to be comfortable enough for you to go yeah that's great let's just let's get that no a futon is something you get as a stop gap before, until you can get something uh better there, or if you're a college student and have no room and thus go hey let me i need a place where i can both sit and do stuff but also roll it out and sleep when i need to sleep so it's, it's nice, um, but it is the reason why we don't use our basement too much. Our basement was supposed to be our entertainment area. Uh, we have a nice entertainment unit that we got from Ikea that we use to store all of our movies and video games, our old PlayStation games. <laughs> uh, hangs off the wall. It looks really nice. It matches the existing sort of TV stand that we had, um, but we don't use it. I've actually pulled the TV back upstairs because I, we're more often upstairs, and now that I have a Steam Link, which is fantastic, uh, I suggest anyone get it because you can just, if you have a good computer and a good connection, you, <laughs> you can stream games pretty well um, to really any t TV in the house that you have the Steam Link attached to. I use it pretty much almost exclusively as our, in our mellow machine. <laughs> Every time we play our mellow, I start it up on the computer and then head upstairs to play it on the, the comfy couch, sitting next to Sal. I do recommend, I do recommend that if you get a Steam Link that you get it on a wired connection at all costs. Um, put your computer, whatever computer you're using to stream, on a wired connection. like. Attach it to an Ethernet cable, etc., etc., and attach your Steam Link as well. Wired. Because wireless has some problems. Um, even if you're not that far away, even if you have a really great connection to the, uh, to your hub, router, yeah, that's the word, to your network router, you're not gonna, you're gonna have problems of it uh, skipping, freezing for little bits. Uh, it's going to drop uh, information, drop connections. So I actually went out 
Well, I didn't go out because I know if I went out, I wouldn't find it at all. I, that doesn't make any sense. I actually tried to hunt for these things around town and no one really carries them. They carry some more expensive versions that I didn't want because they have extra stuff that I don't need. Um, you can do uh, Ethernet over power is the term. Uh, shoot, it's called, if you get it from Netgear or really if you get it from anyone, it's a power line adapter. Uh, these things are a godsend. It's what I basically have everything in our house hooked up to our wireless network, but with these things, uh, turning everything into a wired connection. Oh, what they do is they plug into a wall outlet and then you can plug whatever device, be it a smart TV or some gaming system or a Steam Link as I do, and also your computers, anything that has an Ethernet port, you can use to basically turn your house's, ah shoot, your house's um, wiring, you know, electrical wiring into into a uh, Ethernet connection. It's fantastic. Even if even if you're connecting it from one side of the house to another, it's still going to be a much better. Uh, much faster and much more reliable connection than uh, wireless. I mean, obviously wireless has its perks, being able to just pick up and move. But if you really need that speed, if you really need that reliability of a wired connection, uh, these things are fantastic. They are not cheap. I believe I had a version, a basic version that they don't sell anymore. I mean, basic. Like a, I have a version that they don't really sell anymore that I got for about $50 for a set of two. But the new stuff, which is, which is objectively better, but obviously if you don't, if it doesn't, if you don't need that much power that these things put out, if you don't need that much speed, then it's kind of annoying because you don't have the cheaper, older option. I got a new one that was objectively better and faster for, gosh, 60, 80, 100, something like that. For a set of two, of course. Um, these things, they're sort of like starter kits. You put one by the router, and then you put one wherever you need it, and you can pretty much mix and match these things onto the same network, and they'll find each other, as long, you know, as, long as they're from the same manufacturer, generally. Uh, so you can get one, or you can get that set of two to start off with, and then just keep adding to it if you think you need more which I did so pretty nice stuff I recommend getting that uh, if you have the need for it uh, I didn't know about it there goes the heater kicking on so it's gonna be pretty loud in here I suppose but I didn't really know about it until I was trying to find solutions for when we moved into this apartment and they I don't know if they could not but <laughs> the our uh, ISP, I don't know if they couldn't do it, but they definitely refused to drop a line to where I wanted it, wanted to put our wireless router. So I just figured out a way. <laughs> yeah, so those are kind of a godsend. <laughs> but here I am in our unfinished basement built by crappy contractors. Oh man, that's, that's a story to tell. They... You, you live in here, and I don't really know if I can explain all the different things that are wrong in this apartment. We moved in basically right after, uh, what, some new company or people uh, bought this whole apartment complex. And so they're going through and they were doing a whole lot of renovations, which is great, you know. So a lot of stuff is new, new appliances, uh, new finishes. It, the painting looks fine, I guess. It's pretty sloppily done, but, you know, things have been repainted. But you see the work that they did, and it's really shoddy work. For example, the downstairs closet under the stairs is... It was painted shut. We could not get in there for the longest time. Eventually, I took, like, not an exacto knife, but, you know, like, one of those slim razors slim razor blades and had to slide it along the crack 
Because they painted the door, and they painted the door jam, and then they closed the freaking door. And they obviously painted the door while it was still on the hinges. You can see the paint streaks on the hinges. They didn't... It's. It was the most ridiculous thing. It was a very quick, very mediocre job done by the lowest bidder, as tends to happen, who were trying to cut quarters and save time because they have... This is a huge project. They have to remodel every single apartment. That's close to 300 apartments, I think. Something like that. So it's not... It's not a small job. And I get trying to go quickly. But they were very much cutting corners in all kinds of places and just doing a shoddy job. They didn't remove anything to paint. You know? Because that takes time. Even though you get a better product out of it, they didn't. They just painted over stuff. And I don't even think they used tape to sort of... You know, they have this sort of painter's tape that you put down along places where you're painting so that you don't... You know, you get nice clean edges and you don't get paint on things that you don't need paint on. No, they didn't bother to do that. The most they did was remove some of these outlet covers. Uh, vents have been painted over. Not completely to make it match, no, just sort of on the edges of it, very messily. Baseboards have been, uh, were painted while still attached to the wall. Even, and very clearly there was no painter's tape used because there's white paint streaks on our gray, blue, it's not, I think it's a gray wall. Some might say it's a blue wall. Sort of a very light slate. Yeah, it's... My, my closet doors, where I keep my clothes, slide together. One of them's bowed. They couldn't get a freaking straight board. No. Those stick together now because of their terrible job. Uh, the downstairs finishing that they did was a rush job. And you can see it when you go into our laundry room, which is unfinished. Um, it doesn't have the same sort of uh, furnishings. Well, furnishings. Finishings. Our sort of downstairs rec area does. It's it's terrible. Uh, that doesn't even... I'm not even... I haven't even gone over all the worst stuff about this place. It's just... The more you live here, the more you see small things that just pop at you. Like, I'm looking at a, uh, a door frame right now that's not straight on with the wall that they built down here. I don't know if the door frame is crooked or if the wall is crooked... Probably both, to be honest. It's probably both. But you actually see it upstairs, too, um, with our bathroom, where two, the, the door frame to our bathroom and the door frame to a bedroom are pretty much right next to each other, and there's a gap at the bottom, and they go up, and they come together to touch at the top. Painted right there, of course, so they're painted together, which makes it very obvious at the top when the gap is bridged by their terrible paint job. The, it, yeah, just more examples that, yeah, it's pretty silly. In any case, it's enough about, uh, who, I'm not used, I usually don't ramble at the start, usually I go into news and then ramble at the end, but just kind of got carried away. Uh, to start off with, let's go into Eternity News, news about Eternity, there's, uh, some updates with the forum going on right now. We, or we, I say we as if anyone else in the administration team actually does anything regarding the forum. Um, Lines is, or has, been updating the forum to a new version of the software that we use. So that has broken some things. It broke all of the themes, of, cor of course. Plugins and themes that we use on the forums just work with the old version, but not with the new because... He let the thing get away from him and didn't really update it. And also, authors tend to not update their stuff every once, every now and again. They don't. They're not around all the time. They make a thing and stop being into the forum scene, or stop updating their stuff and making it compatible because you know they just stop caring. And they move on with their lives, which happens. So it's been a bit of a chore. Uh, he's had to go through and 
basically wiped out all of our custom stuff and then throw it back in. <laughs> yeah, rebuild it all back up. I'll add in all the stuff that we had added in because honestly, that is much faster than trying to troubleshoot all the problems that, that arose from the new version. Uh, but with this new version, that should, well, mostly it takes care of a lot of security vulnerabilities and it allows us to have, I believe he was doing it for the, the wiki, I think. <laughs> the wiki runs on that same thing as well, I believe, but it needs, there, there's not really any compatibility from an old version to a new version. I think a new version can read stuff from the old. I'm not certain. Don't quote me on that. I have no idea what goes on in the back end. <laughs> All I know is that the forums are under construction. It's a work in progress, but it sh all the uh, all the problems that you have on the forum currently, they should be resolved. Uh, let Lines know. He has created a thread regarding the update. If you come across any problems, don't tell him in the Discord. Don't tell him in the Discord. That'll get lost. Uh, throw it up on that thread in the announcements, and he will get to it and investigate it as soon as he can. So eventually things will get back to normal. Elsewise, there's a lot of elections going on because it is an election year and people have actually gotten, uh, gotten excited about activity again. Things are moving. Things are being planned out, even though I'm not a fan of planning out things. But hey, if that floats your boat, it's not just planning though. People are actually uh, posting uh, modern tech roleplay stuff. <laughs> modern tech roleplay things. And a lot of them are elections. There's an election in the Mandivines Union, uh, open to the public for people to influence. I believe it's for the president. Uh, it was recently changed. They had it off site on a form, or Brum did. He had it off site on a form, and I guess people weren't responding. I did. I don't know who can't take like literally a minute open it up click a few random check boxes and submit it I mean, if you don't care then you don't care but i tend to help people out because if they want activity they want input i'll read a little bit and give them that input because it's the least i can do brum has instead moved it from that off-site form onto a forum poll so go check that out it'll take literally all of five seconds for you to do and I'm sure he'll be happy. Speaking of elections, elections in Newland have started. It is not a presidential year. That'll be in two more years in 1596. But, which I thought it was. I thought it was 1596. So I was prepared for a presidential election and actually popped up the 1596 thread. Only to find out it's not 1596. It is currently 1594 and this is a legislative election. So 250 seats in the Federal Assembly of Newland are up for grabs. And hopefully this will actually fix some of the problems I've had with the legislature. We have had a habit of going into sort of inactivity or me being away and doing stuff or just not caring. Uh, the legislative elections have kind of been slacked uh, upon, slacked off. I, I have slacked on doing the legislative elections for the last, I don't know if it was one or two cycles. I think it was just at least, it's been at least one cycle since I've done them. I've done the presidential ones, which also have uh, legislative seats attached to them, but I mean the ones that are just legislature, just for the federal assembly. I've kind of slacked on doing those. So hopefully this will right some of the changes that have happened in the, in the assembly. Can you believe it? I have never run a legislative uh, election since the moderate party came into being. They were supposed to be this big, great thing that popped up and replaces the, uh, the liberalists, my liberalists, which I'm trying to not be, not have them be a major party anymore, mainly because I want to be less active in the politics of Newland and spend more time administrating it so I can do other things. But hey, they were supposed to come up and they never really did. They have only had the 11 seats or so that I 
I gave them by administrative action, <laughs> if you were, as it were. Never really had that election to sort of solidify their presence. So this will do that. This will, I was hoping, would knock off some of the unused parties. If they don't get any action, I'm going to remove them from the rolls. So it'll clean up a few things so we don't have 12 parties and most of them not really having... Well, I say most. A few of them not really having any backing anymore. That's going to happen, uh, I believe, in one more week. The forums will... Not the forums. The polls will stay up until the 28th of October, at which point sometime during that day, I will be taking them down and running the results. Other than that, and speaking of polls, the Democracy Index, the Freedom and Democracy Survey, is live. It is live for the year 1594. So, get in there and go ahead and take the survey regarding any or all of your nations, if you don't mind. You can even submit for some NPCs that you tend to play or that you know about. It is a long survey and it goes into pretty deep depth. So if you do not have, I would say about 20 or 30 minutes, I mean, you can breeze through it once you know the questions, but I would say that each survey could would probably take maybe 15 to 30 minutes because there are quite a few questions. Um, I try to make it as quick as I can and I know there are some issues or rather things that need clarified. Um, if you have anything that needs clarified that doesn't seem to make sense, uh, anything that might be poorly worded or misunderstood, pretty much anything that people have been sending me questions about, put it in the uh, OOC thread that I have for the Democracy Index. That way I can remember these questions and address them, uh, fix things, and clarify things by the time the next Democracy Index survey rolls around in uh, 1600. And that's when I'll be closing the current survey and popping up the new one for that year. So if you have any questions, uh, go ahead and send them to me, but also put some... Uh, Put them in the in the discussion thread for the survey so that I remember to address these things much later and don't forget them like I have the last time. <laughs> People had these issues in the 1580 survey and the 1571 and no one ever pops them in the thread. So when it becomes literally years later when I don't remember what went on, uh, I can't fix them. Six years from now is about a year? Is it, do we have six years in a, well, year? I can't remember. I'd have to look at the calendar and see what's up. But yeah, Democracy Index, that's cool. I actually popped up the map. I finally got off my butt <laughs> many years later, literal real years later, and created the map for the 1580 survey. So you can check that out in the actual thread, which is in the media center under the Rue Research Group. RUE research group. Uh, go ahead and check out that map. It's nice and pretty. I, I actually prefer the older, older style with the darker ocean. But hey, what are you going to do? I get to use what lines gives me. I mean, I could do it myself, but that would be work. <laughs> go ahead and check that out. Participate. If you don't submit a survey, that's fine. If things haven't really changed much in your nation and you don't want to accidentally make it look like things changed quite a bit um, or if things didn't change at all I should say don't respond just don't respond it's fine um, if things haven't changed in your nation you don't believe if you don't respond then I will pull your data from the previous surveys really you should only respond if things have changed especially if they've changed significantly um, obviously I I like it if you respond every year <laughs> and try to make it consistent because my line of thinking is if you do it once, you should do it again. And if they're inconsistent, well, that's a problem of how you role played. They have changed. If you think they haven't changed and you submit your responses and things did change, guess what? What you have in your mind about your nation has changed, which means your nation itself 
has changed. All in a roundabout way to say, please do the, re the survey. Anyway. Ah, uh, gosh. In any case, now that I have bored you by repeating the same words over and over and talking about polls and surveys that no one really cares about, well, except for the democracy survey, everyone seems to love that thing. Ah, <laughs> uh, what else was there? Macarius and the uh, Discord staff have added a new... Well, it, okay. <laughs> For all the administrators <laughs> and Akarius have been adding new bots to the Discord. Um, you've noticed Toasty. Toasty's been pretty great. I may have mentioned Toasty last time. Uh, we have renamed it to Lines 3.0, who is our new, new, our new overlord and master after Lines 2.0 has become outdated. Though 2.0 does still annoy us by yelling at us about using certain words. Even though those certain words are inside of other words, and that's just an unfortunate coincidence, such as cockroach. Yeah. So, we have Toasty, who is now Lines 3.0. You will see him floating about. Has a whole bunch of nice features, and everyone's been spanning the Pokemon command in the bot zone. And realizing that it's actually not really great. And we've all been lamenting the older, the new generations. It's pretty great. You should join us. In addition to that, we have Pokedex, which Black likes to use. Um, we have, most importantly, I think we just added Disboard. D-I-S-B-O-A-R-D. Um, this is a tool, essentially, that advertises our community, our Discord server, and our forum to others. I don't know where you can look it up at. I have to find out because I know the basics. I only know what's been going on in sort of our administrative area and our little testing arena. The premise is that one of your, our, one of your friendly neighborhood administrators uh, uses Discboard to bump our community and it goes to the top of some homepage somewhere. And people can use that homepage to find new communities to join. We had one guy pop in, one new person that I assume came from this uh, application, and immediately left. Um, I do believe it's gonna, it's not really going to be a way, we're not gonna keep a lot of people, but it is a way to get our, our forum out there. Eventually you do get to keep people. People will eventually stick around, which is nice. So it's just a nice little recruiting tool that we've added. Uh, no need to be alarmed. No need to be alarmed. Uh, hopefully we'll see some new people floating around. I believe we've also been tossing about the idea of having a nation state's presence once again. We've kind of moved away from it. Um, no, not really any forum activity, the, sorry, forum, not really any regional message board activity on nation states. Our region has slipped to about 10 nations. Um, we used to have many more than that. I, I don't know if it was in the 20s or 30s. But, you know, as people become disinterested in nation states and their nations sort of cease to exist, as the term goes, then it really uh, lowers the presence on nation states, which has been uh, historically our primary recruiting option. If people, if we send out a telegram and people actually decide to look at it and even rarer decide to visit the region and see what it's about and they see that there's, oh, there's 10 people and the last activity on the regional message board was 20, 30 days ago, they're not going to be too thrilled. Even if we do say, hey, all the activities on the Discord, they're not going to be too thrilled. I know it is a bad first impression for me when I'm looking around, even though... I don't put much weight in it. <laughs> I actually see if they have a forum and what their Discord looks like or any other stuff. But it does leave a bad first impression. So it does look like we're going to try to get another nation state's presence. It's unsure how long that's going to last though, since it seems like most people are not even on there. But if you'd like to help out, go ahead, uh, log back into nation states, uh, revive your nations, put them back into the region, and... I try to log into my stuff at least once a month. <laughs> Usually I fail <laughs> for anything other than my, uh, my main nation, but it does, it does help. So if you can, if you remember, 
I don't begrudge people who don't remember because I barely remember. But if you do remember, and if you can, go ahead and log back into nation states, revive your nations, bring them back to eternity. It makes our region look that much better. It makes our community look that much better. In any case, I believe that's it. I really don't have anything else to talk about. <laughs> I rambled about myself starting off and then got into eternity, which is a bit backwards. Usually we go the other way around. Um, we have had some fun over the weekends, Sal and I. We went to this apple butter festival nearby. It was a normal small town sort of festival. Um, it had, you know, your typical sort of people selling their crafts and people selling their baked goods. There were some farmers? I'm not sure if... Not really farmers, more like gardeners selling their wares. So someone selling a lot of gourds <laughs> because it is fall. Not as much apple butter as you thought there would be. It's more of a, what I figured was that the whole apple butter part was just a historic festival for the city. Um, it used to be, there were a lot of orchards nearby and that was a big deal. So they have an apple butter festival because this is the year for it. I mean, sorry, not the year. This is the time for it being fall. Um, you can actually see in one of the little historical things, uh, the old way that they made apple butter, just these big, not really vats, but it's like the bottom half of a barrel nestled over a fire and people with these big, long, not really spoons, but they look kind of like a wooden hoe, except, you know, a wooden gardening hoe, except the stick is about 12 feet long <laughs> so that you're standing away from the fire and any accidental bubbling over of the concoction within and the little hoe part at the end is about a foot long inside of the what is essentially apple butter um, and you're mixing it around and around to keep it from uh, sticking and burning and also to make sure everything's nice and even the old way the apple butter was made now instead you peel up some apples, chop them up, put them in a crock pot or a Dutch oven, just let it cook on a low heat for hours and hours. So it was pretty cool to see the old way that it was done. And there were some people actually just giving away apples for free. Uh, Sal was intrigued and impressed by watching this one uh, vendor who was actually making, you can call them pork cracklins or you can call them pork, uh, pork rinds or chicharrones, the, essentially pork skin fried. Um, you'd actually see it happen. One guy was making them live right there and bagging them up and they boil up really quick. <laughs> you put them inside that oil and within a minute they're ready to go. It was really cool to see. They just, they're these little chips, maybe the size of a coin that he chucks in there. Well, I, I not chucks in cause that's hot oil and that would create a, <laughs> a hazard, but he pours them in and they just poof poof up into these, uh, into, you know, the classic shapes and the classic texture. It's uh, really uh, mesmerizing to actually watch it happen because it just, it just happens so suddenly and it doesn't look like it's something that would take such a short amount of time. But the oil was at 450 degrees, <laughs> which uh, makes a lot of sense then. <laughs> um, it was a nice time. This is the season. It is fall. This is the season for nice little local fairs like this. We tend to go out and experience them. Uh, Sal really loves them. I like them. Um, I don't like being out in 40 degree weather, but hey, I do it for my job. I can suck it up and do it on the weekend too, I guess. Oh my gosh, speaking of the weekend. Oh, <laughs> I didn't see this because I came home Friday, had dinner. We watched some Marble Olympics <laughs> or the Marble Olympics. Uh, and I fell asleep on the couch. Well, I got a text from my boss that one of my coworkers had bailed on doing uh, shoot pavement work this weekend and was asking around to people uh, to see if they could do it uh, in, in, in his stead. Well, I had my phone upstairs charging and I was downstairs watching YouTube and then I fell asleep and then I went to bed. And so I didn't really see it until the next morning that he was asking around and people were going, nope, we can't do it. Nope, we can't do it. And I'm the last person and I just had no response. So <laughs> it was pretty funny. 
It's like, hey, this guy can't do it. Can anyone else? And everyone's like, nope. We'll see if anyone, he actually got in touch with anyone or if it was just one of those things where we weren't there to do the work. Maybe I would have said yes if I'd seen it earlier. <laughs> I probably would have. I tend to be the last, I tend to be the fall guy. <laughs> when everyone else can't do it, I tend to be the one who does. I still haven't responded to it. <laughs> uh, he'll know. I mean, obviously I didn't go. Anyway, that's uh, this week's Eternal Rambling. A lot has gone on, and yet also not, surprisingly. It just it doesn't feel like it, but a lot of what's gone on has been a lot of uh, backroom stuff. Uh, and a lot of um, a lot of polls, which is still activity. It's nice to see people interacting and partaking in what other people have done. Eventually, sometime, I'm actually going to get a, uh, <laughs> a post up. I keep meaning to write, but they're just... Oh my gosh, Friday. Friday was terrible. I went in to do compaction work for earth, earth work. What they're doing is we're starting to lay in the base and subgrade, sorry, the sub base and the base for a roadway. Well, I get there, their compaction equipment doesn't work. So it's like, okay, we'll see. We'll see if they get it to work. So I spend seven and a half hours literally doing nothing waiting on this compaction equipment to start working. And then I go off to do concrete. So I'm like, well, okay, that's a wash, but maybe I at least I'll actually get something done. Nope, I get there to do concrete and the concrete pour got canceled. So I literally spent nine and a half hours Friday at work doing literally nothing. Not for lack of trying, but uh, I was so pissed because I have no idea what I did instead. I tried to make myself look busy. You know, I'm walking around inspecting, looking at stuff, trying to make it look like I'm doing work so that I'm not just sitting in my truck for seven and a half hours, which looks kind of bad. But I mean, there, there was just nothing for me to do. And yet I needed to be there in case there was. Um, and in that time, I could have written something. I could have written two things. I could have written a lot. I could have done a lot of writing for um, any any number of role plays that I'm in, or even news or anything, and I didn't. I don't know what happened. I have this problem where if I don't feel like I have enough time to sit down and get out all my ideas in one go, then I won't do it because I have the hardest time resuming. If I get into the groove and I'm writing and it's looking really nice, and then I stop, and then I have to come back to it. I've lost that groove. I've lost that train of thought. Um, it doesn't look as good. I can't get into that same uh, train of thought again. So to me, it doesn't feel like it's as good. Um, it doesn't feel as joined together. And it just doesn't... I'm not happy with the end result if I have to stop and then start again. So I have this habit of just not. And I need to just shake it and just say, screw it. Just go, get what you can, get it done. But it's a really tough thing for me to do. <laughs> uh, eventually, eventually. I'm going to keep trying, though. Eventually, I'm going to get something written. And eventually, I'm going to get over this ridiculous notion of me just not doing something because I suddenly don't have the time to do it. At least get the project started, Separalis. At least get it started. Anyway, I have been Separalis. That was this week's ramble. Uh, you can... Uh, if you are new, if you somehow are not part of the Eternity community, you can join us at eternityrpc.com. We have a Discord. We have all kinds of wonderful things. We have wonderful people. You should join us. It's great. I have been Separalis. This has been uh, the Eternal Ramblings for 21st of October, 2018. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.